the bowler hoss. Interior, theater stage, day. Stage is bare of scenery. The repertory company consisting of actors Anna, Willem, Carl, Helen, and Martin, the director, sit around a circular table with play scripts in hand. No one is happy about the theme of the play. This is the most asinine script I've ever read. Such drivel. Who the hell wrote this? <laughs> Listen to this. My character doesn't kiss his lover before going off to war. He says, for the fatherland, yeah. Heil Hitler. Yes, it is silly, but if we are to stay in business, we must perform works that are allowed. This is the best that the script sent me. They are all propaganda, but at least they have work. Come on, they are all professionals, so let's read through it. I'll do some editing tonight and put a kiss in for you, Gar. Wait, where is Fritz? He has a part in this play. I will be doing his role. Fritz was taken two weeks ago. You know, of course, that he is Jewish? Of course, but he's not political. Why didn't anyone let me know? Oh, my poor Fritz, what did he do? It doesn't matter what the Jews do or think, Helen. Whole families are disappearing, taken by force. Who knows where they end up? And now Fritz, he always made us laugh. I miss him, and so do the children. Those of us who knew beg Fritz to leave the community with his family when all this was starting. Max Reinhardt and many others were able to get out. Fritz didn't think it would happen to him. After all, he has a large following. Maybe he thought the German audiences would protect him. Fritz's his wife, Mina, and, and their children, what has become of them? His wife was picked up also. We don't know their whereabouts. They may have been killed already, but the two little girls are in hiding. I fear for their safety and those who are shielding them. Oh, poor darlings, I want to help. Where are they? I'll take them. Carl stands and walks about in frustration. You, Helen? You of all people, are you insane? Your husband would have the children and you and all of us killed if you took them home. Oh, Philip wouldn't do that. He's a loyal party member, but he loves me. Willem stands up and faces Helen. I think I can speak freely here. You have a good heart, Helen. You are either incredibly naive or in denial of what your husband does. I really wasn't aware until... Montage with Willem voiceover, stock footage in black and white. Asylums are being emptied out of mental patients. Many of them are children. Sanatorium patients in wheelchairs and stretchers being rounded up. The disposal of the bodies. Philip's direct orders are to take patients in mental institutions and in sanatoriums along with the crippled, blind, old, and helpless. Anyone who collects state aid and put them to death. And he started with children. Children? How cruel. I honestly didn't know. It's true then, but why? Philip Buller is the mastermind of, the, of this euthanasia program as a solution to the financial drain on the government. I still don't know how he gets away with it. There are no uprisings against it. The German public turns a blind eye. Helen clutches her head and bends forward. Philip was an author when we met. There was such glamour in the parties and travels. <clears throat> Lately, I've been busy with the children in my care and keeping up two homes. And I know there are just excuses, but what could I have done? If I knew from the beginning, what could I have done? Everyone is in a dilemma, Helen. Most people have only their own interests to be concerned about. The easiest way is to put on blinders, accept, and become loyal followers. Willem sits. Director Martin stands and paces back and forth. And the alternative? Fear him. Those who try to interfere are considered enemies of the state. The same as Hitler's political rivals, and they simply disappear. Montage. SS troops barge into a newspaper office to arrest the editor classroom with the professor yanked out by Gestapo. A science lab full of bottles and experiments smashed. Doctors and nurses back up at gunpoint. I knew many of them. Journalists, professors, artists, playwrights, doctors. But it's not just apathy. We were all put in a state of fear. It's still with us. We have to be very careful. Let's cancel this run through. I don't think we will accomplish much today. I am weary. 
The cast gets ready to leave and the conversation is continued while they lock up, turn out the lights, etc. We didn't talk about it much, Helen, but we all wondered if you knew what was going on. The gypsies and now all the Jews who were able to work are used as slaves in the factories and the rest are murdered. First Germany, now all of Europe. Philip spoke of his work as taking care of the problems of... <laughs> you mean you really don't know what's been going on? I find that hard to believe. Surely you've heard of the death camps? You know Adolf Hitler personally. You have been seen with him. Oh, I'm just there as a showpiece. All of you know I opposed the Nazi propaganda. Nothing of importance is discussed with the women present. I stopped listening to the news and reading newspapers long ago. They are too depressing. And Philip never discusses his work? Didn't you suspect anything? Surely Anne Goring knew. Never. Philip was, that is, I, I thought he was sheltering me from the horrors of the war. I only recently learned the truth from my housekeeping staff. It's hard to believe my husband is responsible for such atrocities. People like your husband don't think of the suffering they are causing. They convince themselves that they are doing a good job for Hitler and the country. Oh, God. I always thought his authoritative manner was part jealousy and part concern for my welfare. I've mistaken arrogance for pride. Helen turns, feeling dizzy. She sits on a seat in the audience. The others gather around her. Maybe I can help in some way. What if I take in other orphan children and include Fritz's little girls? I can give them a home and a good life. No, absolutely not. How could we possibly trust them in your care? What could you do to assure their safety? No, Helen, your intentions may be good, but... Well, Philip is in Berlin most of the time. When he comes to Neustorp, he asks about the children, Renata and Daniel, but does not show any interest in seeing them. What about Rachel's and Sheila's last name? would have to be changed, and someone could find out. They need papers. What if they even mention their religion? The other children would surely talk. Yes, those are problems, Helen. But if you can shelter them safely for a while, they will be put on a list to be transported out of the country. The underground movement works hard to rescue and place people, but it takes time. Do you agree, Anna? Well, if it's just for a short while. Then another one of us has to come up with a hiding place. I would like them to have fresh air and sunshine. They don't even have to go to school in Neustorf with the others. I can tutor them myself at home. You know, of course, my father is a professor at the university. I'll ask him what I need to do. Yeah, for God's sake, Helen, you can't go broadcasting the news. Don't tell anyone. Martin, I, I don't think this is such a good idea either. Well, Carl, this could be a temporary solution. You were to find a hiding place next, and you haven't come up with anything. Helen, the girls are a bit young for school. You see, the whole troop has taken on this burden. It's the least we can do. And you didn't include me. You've all known me for so long. Please, you're like family. I understand your fear of Philip now, but you can trust me. You do trust me, all of you, don't you? Well... You seem pretty determined, Helen, but there are risks involved. Anna, this will relieve you of the burden of concealing them. Anna, you have been hiding them in your apartment? Oh dear, Anna, that's why you're so worried. Montage in Anna's small cluttered apartment. The two girls, Rachel, age five, and Sheila, age three, sit on the bed. The older one colors pictures with crayons. Her sister <clears throat> plays with a rag doll and a stuffed toy dog. The little one, Sheila, starts to hum, and her big sister pokes her and shushes her. The three-year-old buries her head in the pillow and sobs softly. It's hard on the girls having to stay quiet all day. I'm afraid someone will hear and report us. Do you have the room for them, Helen? There is a lot of space to spare in the house, and I can divide some of the rooms easily. Interior, theater, day. You have to maintain complete secrecy. How can you trust your servants? Your servants might turn them in. My house is secluded, so the girls can play outside in the fresh air. As for my servants, I know their loyalty is to me. 